So, um, our former YNI fellow, Libby Grummer, was also able to bring her students to, to talk to you today. And we're going to begin with Ladeja um, to speak with you. I'm really nervous. <laughs> um, today I will be reciting the poem, Ghetto Woman, by Annie Ruth. Your family is ghetto people. You know how I can tell? Your grandma was a drunkard, and your cousins live in cells. You'll turn out to be just like them. Ain't no sense in fooling yourself. For you're bound to be ghetto people. For you, there's nothing else. Ain't no sense in going to college and keeping those imaginary goals. Cause see, for all you ghetto people, the story has been told. you are either have 10 babies or live a life of crime. Yes, you ghettos people's lives not even worth a dime. And if you don't marry a bum who beats you black and blue, you'll probably end up in a box with people crying over you because your family is ghetto people. I know you're all the same. Now come on, ghetto woman, and answer to your name. <clears throat> yes, I'm a ghetto woman, and my family made mistakes. My grandma was a drunkard, and my cousins the police have chased. Yes, I'm going to college and I always keep my goals. You just watch carefully and see my story told. See, I was a ghetto woman and proud from whence I came. For being poor and living in slums, I'll never be ashamed. And though I am a rich woman, the ghetto is in my heart. For in it, I learned a sense of pride, dignity, and I learned my most essential part. I learned that people can't be judged by their family's actions or the places that they call home for a person's heart and soul to make a judgment on. Thank you. My name is Libby, and I had the privilege and the honor to be a teacher of honors government last year. Two of my exceptional students are here. That was Ladeja Harris, and you're going to hear in a bit from Mia Tyler, who also was a part of that class. Um, I have the gift of hindsight. I didn't have to do the hard work this last summer um, of writing a new unit. I just get to see that two students who a year ago were new to me are now college freshmen, and they're here with me, and that's a gift. So. Looking back, I want to tell you what we did and what we've learned from that process, and I hope inspire and encourage others to do similar things. So when I um, applied for the Yale National Initiative as a new teacher in Richmond Public Schools of history and government, I said, what would my students really get into? And I thought about the um, graffiti scrawled across the desks and like etched into every solid thing at my school. And I thought, the bottom, bottom life. And so I was interested in the history of public housing and how as a nation we have viewed that history. And, and so I started, and I got to last summer, exhume the real story. Like what was the beginning of public housing when it seemed like a great idea and what happened in between then and now. And I specifically got to focus on Hillside Court, which is the public housing project of the six conventional projects in Richmond from which students at my high school, George Wythe High School, Bulldogs, um, feed. So that's where some of my students come from or have lived at some point in their lives. So um, the launch point, and in just a minute we will start a PowerPoint presentation for which we won the history fair, but um, and moving on. So um, we put together this project because I began looking at archived photos of Hillside Court when it was first constructed. And we learned that it was an all white housing project. I mean, like literally it said white housing project. And across town, the same building with the same materials and the same funding source was built and it was called the Negro Housing Complex. And so, like, 
that was how it started. And as you can imagine, within about 18 years, Hillside Court was drained of white families and black families have steadily moved in. And now today, Hillside Court, as most of our students perceived, um, is all black. And I think today there are two white families at Hillside Court. But that stark contrast was a surprise to us. It was a surprise to my current students. And it's really an interesting story worth telling that I'm sure, as most of you know, is paralleled by all of the large cities in our country. And so um, white flights, urbanization, we looked at those um, from the microcosm of Richmond City. So what we're going to show you again is like a five point, uh, sorry, a five minute PowerPoint presentation, award winning, um, that we have a big trophy for. But anyways, and, um, this presentation features the voices of some of the women who we were able to interview. So you'll be hearing a part of the oral history that we undertook. Let's try this. I didn't want to come here, but I'm making the best of it. Um, this is my community, so I do a lot of things to help the community. My house burned down, and that's how I ended up here. They gave me a government uh, uh, apartment. Within two months, I took it. I came down here to live because first my husband died, and then my daughter had got in trouble, and I took up her lease to take care of her kids. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got it here. So. Because it's like, okay, people put, a, put something on Hillside, but Hillside is not as bad as you think it is. Mm -hmm. I could have moved out a little while back, but I'm okay. I'm on Tenney Council, Hillside Court Partnership. We do the food bank. I get along with all the kids. Everybody call me grandma, mama. You know, it's just wonderful. And I grew up on Biden Avenue on the north side. And we still, um, both my parents have passed now. I lost my mother three years ago to breast cancer. But we still had a family home. And um, me and my sisters and my brother, by us being on um, uh, fixed incomes, I have a nephew that's a school teacher and he had four kids. And we allow him to stay in the house because we don't have the type of money uh, if something goes wrong with the roof or if the hot water heater go out, you know, then you got to pay taxes every year. We didn't have that kind of money. So we allowed my nephew to live in there by him having a good job and also his wife that we didn't know it's going to be up kept and um, it's not going to sit there and just go to waste. But I wanted to throw something else in there too. Hillside, people give Hillside a bad name, and things do happen here, but the majority of the time, it's not even the people that live here. They come here yeah, too. It's they people come. that other people are allowed to come down in here. My granddaughter that I said that graduated from Franklin Military, she got shot right out here in front of the um, she okay? Rex Center. Yeah. yeah. Because it was a big fight down here in which she shouldn't have did, but she coming to the fight to see what's going on. Same and in the meantime, when they started shooting, she caught a bullet. So it's, and, and, and this person, I think he lived up in Oak Grove somewhere. So it's not the people in here side, it's the people that's coming in here. You know, I mean, I learned a long time ago, um, you can live anywhere, but it's what you make of it, where you live. If you stay in your house and mind your business and don't be having a whole lot of people in and out and keep your grounds clean and stuff like that, you're not going to have no trouble out of the back. Can I describe it? Well, when I was down here, like I said, things have happened. But on the whole, I, I never had no problems out of my life. When we started the food bank, I was real happy. I'd be at the front of the line. We've been doing it for five years. I stay in the same place. I think I've missed once or twice. And the people that come through and I get to interact with and talk to them, say, how you doing this month? And make sure you come back next month. They'd be so happy to get their food. And I love that. 
And that's something special for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That boom bang when they get their boom and stuff. Yeah, I got a little chair up the street, a little company. Uh -huh. She said, she look, um, Yvonne loves children, especially babies. She'll steal them babies. <laughs> and they know to go to her house too. Well, they can. Little baby do your knock on my door. Who? By himself. But see, he know where he was going. I bet he did. Oh, the little, your little one, you called me and told me about it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Got those little bow legs, and they just a fat. <laughs> and he was going up the street. I looked at Get ready to knock on my door. I said, where you going? Start laughing. Then I caught another little one. I was sitting on the front, and I don't know if this happened to go down there. And I heard a door slam. And the, um, wonder about out there but me and I said, where that baby come from? It was another baby. <laughs> See, they tell. When I where look around, the baby went down to Bruce Street and was going up the street. But good thing I was out there. Then I went around and looked. The baby said, you babysitting? I said, uh-uh. And I took the baby to his mama. Mm -hmm. She laughed and like it was funny. I said it wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. Anybody could have came up Bruce Street and grabbed him, and that would have been it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could have got hit by a car? Yeah! Mm. Just with a pamper on. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. I said, it's funny. Mm. Wow. They don't, I mean, you know, I ain't talking about them, but they need to watch them churn. That's what that I mean, they sleep boy. at night. I mean, up, up, up all night and sleep during the day. In the fields. Uh, a lot of these kids are raising their He's stuff. He's back there in the field. Um, Yvonne, what else we be doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> we had seniors, Miss Michelle to make sure. She makes sure we go on trips. We have been, where do we, we go to Lewis Botanical Gardens. They went to the wow. City Lights. We go out and eat. We have people to come in. We've had cooking classes. We've had chronic illness classes. Um, wow. What else? What else? Because I got so many um, certificates from the Virginia yeah. ex Coordinative yeah. Extension or something. Yeah. I didn't want to come here, but I'm making the best of it. Um, this is my community, so I do a lot of things to help the community. I would like to say two things in particular before I take a seat and let Mia tell you more about the project. Um, these two students are phenomenal examples to me of people who have overcome difficulty. Um, our school is not a great learning environment. It's not an easy teaching environment. I'm sure many of us teach in places that feel that way, where the odds are really stacked against most students. Um, Ladeja, we talked about this, so she's cool with me sharing it, but she's a first-generation high school graduate and college attendee. Um, and Mia would be if her brother didn't go to college first. <laughs> Jerk. And it was a real joy and a privilege to be their teacher and to share with them, I hope, what they'll carry with them for a long time, which is that public history and history in general is the people of, uh, sorry, it's the story of people and how people have adapted to their environment over time. And um, we're a part of it and they're making it and I'm so honored to be here today. Thanks. Hello. So to give you a little timeline of the project, this interest in public housing kind of sparked with a documentary that we watched in my class called Pruitt I Go. And Pruitt I Go is a public housing project in St. Louis. And watching Pruitt I Go in our class reminded us a lot like Richmond and a lot like other public housing. So it kind of sparked an interest to look more into Hillside Court. From there, we looked more into the project, and one of our classmates called our local radio station to see if we can get any advertisements for interviewers. 
Long story short, we didn't get any ads, but we were offered a chance to be interviewed, and the interview could be presented on the radio. So somebody came into our class one day and asked us all types of questions about the project, what we wanted to know and find out, and we basically asked for interviewers, which kind of in a way was better than advertisement. And though we didn't get any interviewers from that, that was a really great experience. From there, we interviewed Linda Clark, and Linda Clark found out about this project through a Facebook page. So she came to our classroom, we interviewed her. She's an amazing woman, spiritual, the complete opposite of what you would probably think. She lived in public housing for a long time, raised children in public housing, and is doing very well for herself. And that was our first interviewee. So that was kind of like really special for us. And that was like a really great experience too. From there, we were, I did a radio. <laughs> I, I was on the news, on our local news channel. Me and a classmate went on our local news and were interviewed again <coughs> to talk more about the project, to again ask for more interviewees. And though we did not get any more interviewees, <laughs> it was again an amazing experience to talk more about the project. And it also let others know, like in our local area, and it gave them a little background about Hillside Court, which was a goal of ours for the project. So that was pretty cool. We won the RVA History Fair in spring, like our teacher was saying, um, which was actually a very great look for our school, George with High School, because there is a stigma with that school. So we won a project that was pretty nice, pretty nice trophy. Very large. Yeah, very. Tall. <laughs> very large. Yeah. <laughs> So that actually kind of made us feel really proud, like we were doing something important in teaching others. From there, we presented at VCU at a research conference, and we presented to the Richmond Teacher Residency Program, which were people that just graduated and are getting ready to teach in Richmond Public Schools, to kind of give them a background and into what they're about to get into. So, this project was just a lot of great experiences. We wish we would have had more people to interview, more former and current residents, as um, we didn't get to interview as many people as we liked, but it was a great experience. We learned a lot about the community before and the difference now, and that they're actually doing a lot more positive things than you would think now, and that everything isn't exactly shown. So yeah. Thank you.